You've been involved in a high-speed car chase through the streets of New York. Yeah, I mean, Harry still can't talk about it. Tell us what happened. Yeah, I mean, it was a blur. There were multiple near misses, uh, near collisions. I mean, we were very nearly involved in something catastrophic. A heavy reliance on the word near there, Megan, as opposed to real or actual. Right, you know, and thank God it was near and not actual. No, otherwise Harry would probably never speak again, would you, Harry? The first report of the incident, an official statement from Team Sussex, spoke of a two-hour car chase through the streets. Don't remind us. Don't remind us. Or do you wish you could go back and tone down this earlier statement? Why? I mean, probably the most terrifying experience of my whole life. A frightening experience of my whole life. I mean, two hours. Right? Speeding through the Big Apple. Which means New York. We nearly died. You know? We almost collided with so many different vehicles and pedestrians even. Yes, and for two hours. Although Omid Scooby in an interview did seem determined to downplay the earlier hyperbole. And why do you think that might be? Yeah, because after the shock, right? The shock, the sheer shock and horror of the scenario has probably abated. You know, when, when you get back into karma waters, yeah, there might be a revision when it comes to the recounting of the facts of the scenario. But, you know, I think that's to be expected. Yeah, 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 you, you can't expect the real story to be exactly the same as the emotionally one. Emotional, emotionally one. Don't push yourself, Harry. Yeah. Still very raw. You know, we were basically swerving in and around parked cars and obstacles, you know, trying to get away from the pursuing cavalcade. Cavalcade, you know, of vehicles. You know, I, 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 can't, I can't probably say. I was terrified. I really thought I was going to die in a car crash age 41. Well, I could have categorically assured you in advance that that was never going to be the case. Oh, thanks. Yes, and in that terror, you both took off your seatbelts. We only wanted to get a good look. You can't discriminate against us for that. Uh, there's no discrimination going on here, Harry. But I do want to get back to the details of this incident, you know, this harrowing event. Because Eric Adams, New York City mayor, has dismissed the story as highly unlikely, which, as we know, is code for literally impossible. Yeah, but have you ever considered that Eric Adams might be a racist? Nevertheless, the story has been widely regarded as impossible. I mean, are you aware that there are 16,000 active cameras on the New York streets? Uh, no. I was not aware of that. Oh, is it as many as that? 16,000, you say? Yes, we'll soon find out the extent of the chase, you know, the duration and the level of danger involved, and then we'll be able to compare that against your original statement. Yeah, yeah, but I think you, you'll agree that we've already spoken to the differences between, you know, the original emotionally described story and the, you know, the actual real one, you know, full of facts and actualities, you know. The one that comes along when other people start speaking out about what they saw. Yeah, right. And it's important that you, that you listen to us, you know, hear us on this. Because, you know, when you're under as much stress and panic as we were, you know, in direct aftermath uh, of the incident, you know, you can't really expect those individuals to give, you know, a measured and you know, accurate account always uh, of the details of that incident. Exactly. You know, under those pressured situations, everybody lies. No, Harry. You know, we weren't lying. You know, we don't lie. We just sometimes certain situations mean that we experience alternative truths, you know, different truths. Um, I don't even know why I bother. But this different truth is eerily similar to the tragedy that befell Diana, Princess of Wales, which leaves us to ponder whether you've purposefully inflated the story, 
you know, to bring echoes of that tragedy to your case in a crude attempt to gain public sympathy. Oh, that's ridiculous. No, no, no. I won't have that. Now take that back. Uh, please, Harry, you misunderstand. I believe you, of course. I'm merely bringing you the perceptions of others, you know, as undoubtable as they are. Yeah, you know, I don't always think that the perception of others is, you know, particularly significant. Well, okay then, it's their truth. Oh, oh then carry on. Well, they're not going to believe for a second that if your initial story of a two-hour high-speed pursuit through the streets of New York has shown to be greatly exaggerated, that it wasn't exaggerated that way on purpose to bear a strong resemblance to the incident with Diana. I think that if people see that rather than actually what happened, like, that's a judgment upon them and not a judgment on us, right? I'll be honest, I lost you after the second exaggerated. What I'm getting at is that it would represent a new low in public opinion if they were to come to that conclusion with all the evidence available. You must remember that terms like emotional truth and different truth and my truth and any such similar phrases have absolutely no currency in the real world. Yeah, but that just shows that there's a desperate need for education, right? They just call them lies. Look, look, we were definitely involved in an incident a car chase incident on the streets of New York City, you know, definitely. Exactly what the extent was, how long it went on for, how serious it was, and all those other details. Well, I, I, I don't know anything about them. I'm not, I'm not sure about them. But it certainly left Megan and I shaken, didn't it, Megan? It even put me off my vegan yogurt. Which is a crying outrage, Megan. But, I mean, judgment's going to be pretty brutal if it is discovered, if it's revealed that you overplayed this incident purposefully to make it sound more like the tragic incidents in Paris a quarter of a century ago. I mean, people can only be pushed so far. What do you mean? Well, because you can't get something for nothing in this world, Harry. Yes, you enjoy living in the, the fantasy of living in the fake world you've created. You know, the one where you are deemed qualified to give mental health advice to groups of people based solely on the fact that you complain about your mental struggles both loudly and frequently. I used to spend far too much time laughing and being happy to properly concentrate on your mental health. Yes, we know, Harry, but I'm afraid this luxury that exists in your vacation away from sensible reality means that when reality comes crashing down, which it always does, it is more profoundly painful and acutely destructive for you than it would be for others. We're an essential voice in the global conversation, you know, on mental health, uh, equitable vaccine distribution, uh, you know, the plight of women, you know, equality in the workplace. Yes, again, Megan, but only in your heads, where I'm sure you're also still essential members of the royal family, thought leaders, you know influential media personalities and stars of a successful docu-series on Netflix and, and, and authors of brilliant books. Yeah. Yeah. You're none of those things, but you do have a desperate desire to remain noticeable and of significance, meaning that the temptation to play dirty tricks and spin little stories might be too much to resist. Oh, did I mention that they danced on the streets in South Africa when Megan and I were married? just like they did when Mandela was released. Did they? Uh, just one second, you two. Uh, that was the video, and if you could now please press the like thumb, the notification bell, the subscription button, and leave a comment in the comment section below, that would be mightily welcomed. Thanks. Now please continue with the drivel you were spouting.